friends, how are you? I really hope that you're doing great. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and if you're new, hi, welcome, I'm Finola. If you can hear a noise in the background, that's a cute little doggy. She's walking around so I'm just gonna let her do her thing but just for you to know. That's what the noise is. I'm a biomedical scientist and I'm currently performing a PhD on cancer research and in the meantime I help people to live a healthy life. I focus on the topic anti-cancer habits and mindset and a lot of self-care uh, in order to live a healthy life both mentally and physically. I will leave my Instagram right here if you want to follow and not miss out of any content if this is of interest to you and also I'm going to try and be more active on TikTok. I'm not sure how that will turn out, but yeah, if you use the platform, well, you can find me there also under the same handle as in Instagram. Also, welcome to another Coffee Talk <laughs> episode. I feel like it has been forever since I sat down in front of the camera and talked directly to you. We're going to be talking about life reset and I think this is a very important and deep practice. So I'm just going to share what I normally do and maybe this inspires you and um, you can use it for your life reset. November is here and with November comes the life reset for the new year. In this case, getting ready for 2023. The reason why I love to use November to do this is to have enough time to be able to think and evaluate what is going on in our lives and what we would like to change or what new things we would like to incorporate. Before starting with the video, I just want to share that I have a Notion template for this purpose. It is called Life Dashboard. And in here I have all the steps and all the content that I do and that I will mention in this video. This template has also sections for other resets that I perform throughout the year and sections for self-care and things like tracking your finance. I also have two other Notion templates that may be of interest to you. One is the PhD dashboard and the other one is the business hub. I will leave the link down below in the description box for you to have a look at it. One last thing, I created a little life reset freebie for you guys with some free resources you can use for this purpose. So if you would like to have it, just click on the link in the description box. The power of a life reset is that at any given moment in your life, you can hit the reset button, meaning you can reset yourself, your career and your relationships. It's a practice where you give yourself a fresh start, where you let go of what no longer serves you. You clear your mind of all the unfinished to-dos, get rid of the distractions in your life and understand why you're getting them. I personally do several resets throughout the year, but a very deep, big and intense one in November with autumn. And there are three main reasons for this. The first one, and why I love autumn so much, is because autumn symbolizes time for acknowledging growth and expansion. With the leaves falling, you can see the natural evolution. It symbolizes a time of letting go of what no longer serves you and making space for new things. The second reason is because I love to start the new year fresh and ready, and not actually waiting until the new year starts to evaluate my path and what I want to do. And number three, I love having enough time for this practice and not feeling rushed. With life, we go through different situations. Some are happy and fun and others quite tough. If we do not pay enough attention to ourselves, we can end up with a large amount of stress and anxiety. This affects our body's health, leading to several diseases, and also affect our thoughts, our feelings, and the way that we behave. This is why doing a life reset and several during the year is so important. So that you're able to understand yourself, get to know you better, see how you're doing, and in case you're stressed, anxious, sad, overwhelmed, or angry, try to see where this is coming from and put a solution to it. I heard someone saying, oh, I wish that there will come a moment where I finally do my life reset the correct way to put my life together and never have to do it again, and my life will just be the way I want it forever. I have to say that I do not share this thought. I believe there is a lot of power in the life resets, and I love doing them even when I am in the right path. Because a life reset is not only to get back on track or getting the right path, it is also about reflecting and evaluating what you've been through and how you're doing. And we're constantly going through different situations in life. 
we're constantly go growing and changing. So we will not always like the same things, we will not always have the same needs, we will not always have the same beliefs or values. Or our whys in life can also change. And this is just the natural part of the process. Growing, healing, changing and improving. And the life reset can really help you check on this. So before jumping into all the steps and advices that I've got in today's video, I just want to share um, a practice that I learned from my yoga teacher. And I don't know if I shared this, but I am currently taking a yoga course, a yoga teacher training course, I'm very excited. And on the first day, the teacher shared um, a pra an exercise that I found, I don't know, very, very, very calming, but at the same time, very motivating. So she said, before starting, we are going to light a candle and while we light the candle, we are going to set our intentions and our goals for this practice. And she said that this could basically be done for anything you wanted to do. If it was uh, studying for an exam, if it was a new project in your life, if it was prepping for a meeting, uh, or I figure why not the life reset practice that we're going to do. In order to do this correctly, you light the candle while you set your intention and your focus and the the best way to do this if you feel comfortable enough is to say these intentions out loud and to say them as if they were already happening so imagine let's say that you've got a new goal that you want to work on say that goal as if you already had accomplished that goal and while you light the candle say this out loud and she said that what the light in the candle um, symbolizes is the burning of all the obstacles that you can encounter in that path which I think it's great so this is the first thing that I suggest you doing for this uh, practice uh, lighting the candle with your intentions and burning all the obstacles that could get in the way of you achieving this life reset okay so my first advice to do the life reset is to first get yourself in a calm state when you do a life reset, you're going to dig in deep into your emotions and your feelings. You're going to reflect on what has happened for uh, in the last year. There's a lot of deep evaluation that we're going to do, so I think it's important that we are in a calm state and really relax and that all the stress and all the tension from whatever it is, work, um, problems, whatever, is just out of your body for this practice. So for this, I would suggest meditating and doing yoga. If you're not used to it, you could start with a five minute guided meditation for this purpose. So I will leave several links in the description box uh, just in case you're interested in this, but I would suggest getting a guided meditation that focuses on releasing all the stress and all the tension from your body and gets you in a really uh, calm and relaxed state for today's practice. Another thing that I would suggest is to turn off your notifications so that you do not get interrupted. Uh, I, I normally have a focus uh, set on the phone and it's called me time. So whenever I've got that focus on the phone, no, I've got no notifications whatsoever. I only allow calls from my family or friends that live near close by, you know, that if there's an emergency and people I think that could maybe call me for an emergency, that's what I allow when I have the me time activated. Another thing that you could do in order to get into this calm and relaxed state is to have a hot bath with a very nice and cozy environment and add some lavender. The heat and lavender are known for being uh, stress relievers and helpers to release tension and any possible stress that you have. So the next advice, once we are relaxed and with no tension, <laughs> hopefully, for this practice, is to brain dump. And when I mean brain dump, I mean brain dump, like brain vomit. You can do this in any place that you feel comfortable, either your laptop, your phone, a piece of paper, if you want to stay away from technology today. Um, but I would suggest putting absolutely everything that you have in your mind on a piece of paper or whatever it is that you want to do this. And I would suggest you doing this for every single category that you have in your life. 
So me personally, I do this in Notion and I've got, uh, let's say like a, a board view with all the different categories that happen in my life. For instance, let's say PhD work, my the business that I'm trying to build, uh, my personal life, then I've got another one with health, um, another one with uh, the website, the uh, my Instagram, my YouTube channel. But anyway, every single category that is happening in your life so that when you have finished writing every single thing that is in your mind, you can put it under the right category so that even your brain dump is kind of organized and when you want to go to look back at it, you want to go crazy and be like, oh my god, I don't want to look at that. Um, that's why I love having these uh, categories when doing the brain dump so that the next step is not hard to do. So something that I would advise for your brain dump is to put not only your thoughts and the negative feelings that you have, but every single to-do, every single to-do that you need to, to do, <laughs> any appointment that you're thinking of, that you're constantly procrastinating, put it there, um, every single feeling. Um, for instance, let's say that there is a current task in your life that is really scary right now. Write that down. You are in a fight with a friend and you have not solved that. Write it down. Put every single thing that is in your mind right now, not only the tasks or the goals that you want to do, you know, everything. Once you have finished all this, put it into the right category and then we move on to the next step which is a very intense one in my opinion. Also something that I want to advise in here is for you to take just as much time as you need to do this. Uh, I have been brain dumping and I'm sure that I have not finished since I think a month already. I sometimes feel like people tell you to do this activity in like five minutes or ten minutes or one evening. You brain dump, you move on to the next step and you're good to go. Well, maybe yes, maybe no. It depends on how much you have on your mind, on how you're feeling, maybe that one day you just want to bring them for five minutes and then just have a break, do something else, then come back to it. So this is my personal advice and why I published this video so early and not so close to the new year is for you to have a lot of time and to do this for as long as you need to do the brain dump and to put every single thing that you need on that place where you're doing the brain dump because what happens to me is that I brain dump one day, I think I'm done, I'm feeling super motivated, super relaxed, I'm like, oh, it's good, and then the next day I'm like, another thought, another task, another something, another something pops in my head. So this is why I really wanted to put this message to take your time and not try to rush yourself into doing this. Okay, the next step is to evaluate and reflect. So once we have done the brain dump, we're going to go back to it and we're going to reflect and evaluate every single thing that we have written down. The questions I ask to myself when I try and evaluate. Is it a task? Is it a thought? Is it a feeling? Is it a positive or a negative thought? Is it an appointment that I need to do? From what I have written down, is there anything in there that does no longer resonate with me? Is there something that I have been procrastinating? Why? Is there anything there that I don't want in my life anymore? Are there any new things that I would like to incorporate in my life? Is there anything that pops into mind when I read something that I wrote in the brain dump that I could do to take action towards accomplish that? Is there anything like super easy that just comes out like, oh, actually with this I could do blah, 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 whatever it is. Is there anything like that? When you see goals and when you see tasks, how long do you think it will take to do those tasks or those goals? Regarding your feelings and your thoughts, why are they there? And what can you do about it? From the feelings and the emotions, is there anything you can do to make you feel better? Is there anyone that you can talk to? And is there anything that you can do towards taking action to that? When we have negative thoughts and when we're worried about things, um, normally it's good, not only thoughts and feelings, but whatever it is that you want to do in life and you're maybe unsure of it, it's, it's sometimes good, not always, but it's sometimes good to talk to someone that you truly love and that you trust 
um, to get another perspective and to see what they think or it could be useful to talk to someone about something that is in your mind or has been in your mind for too long and maybe you can see uh, this other perspective. Now another thing that maybe in this step you can do is think how you spend your time and in what you spend your time. I am guessing that maybe you want to incorporate new things in this new adventure of your life. <laughs> in So normally when we reset we always want to do new things that we just discovered. So for this new tasks, goals, whatever it is, a new project, how much time will you need for that one and will you have to rethink how you spend time in order to make new time for it. Something that I think it's really important in this step is to, re to be really really careful because in this step, me included, we can get really really confused. If I set myself as an example and I feel like I always put the same example but because it's a really important habit for me and it's something that I really want it to stay in my life. Something that I have been uh, always working on is to have my lemon water in the morning. So what I did last year is that I would prepare my lemon water the day before and keep it in the fridge so that in the morning uh, all I had to do was to drink it. The reason why I did this is because in the, I know myself and in the mornings I am extremely lazy and it takes a very long time for me to wake up. So I don't want to do anything in the morning, I don't want any effort. Just like the first minutes of the morning, like the first hour, hour and a half, I needed to be super relaxed. If I'm in a rush, I will get stressed. Um, so any effort it does not help me. So I needed to look for a way where drinking my lemon water was not a, a big effort. So that's what worked last year. After a while, then it didn't work. Then what happened to me is that after my uh, laboratory work, after coming home from a big day working, I was just so tired. I couldn't even. I didn't have my. I didn't have energy to prepare the the lemon water. So after after a few months, that just didn't help. So you see, this is an example of creating a system that is going to make you want to work on that goal and make you feel that that goal is easy. So what I have done now. I have changed it. First, it's no longer lemon water, it's uh, ginger, turmeric and lemon. I just read a lot of uh, articles and I yeah, I learned a lot of new things about this habit, so instead of only lemon, it's going to be ginger, turmeric uh, and lemon in water. So what I'm doing right now is that I bought a silicone tray, like the ones that you use for uh, ice. And what I do is that I, I, I prepare a very big amount. Uh, so in a blender I put lemon, ginger and turmeric and I, and I prepare very big amounts. And then I'm going to put that into the silicone tray and put it in the freezer. I prepare this in advance. Let's say I take one day and I say, okay, today's the day that I'm going to prepare big amounts of this so that I have for, you know. So this way I'm preventing from one morning not having the, the little cube with the ginger, lemon and water. All, uh, sorry, the ginger, lemon and turmeric. And the only thing that I have to do is just put it into the uh, in my glass, add some hot water and then decide whether I want to have it, you know, hot or cold or, and, and that's it, that's all I have to do. So this is an example of <laughs> kind of the journey to having the lemon water habit every single morning. Now the next thing, and it's a very important one, is planning. When working on our goals, on our tasks, it is very important to plan. And you may be, I don't know, maybe you're asking yourself why to do this, but normally what we tend to say, or at least me, when a, when a goal doesn't work, my first answer is, I do not have time. I just don't have the time to do this. And sometimes it's not that I don't have the time to do it. Sometimes it's just that when I want to do it, I'm tired. Um, or I spend my time on other things and I don't even... How do you say? I'm not even aware, you know, of how much time I'm spending on other things. So planning is crucial in order to avoid this. And something that really, really works is time blocking. So what I do, and, uh, and I have seen it in a lot of people, is to take your calendar, whichever whichever you want, like whichever works for you. I personally uh, do it on Apple Calendar, but because all of my devices are Apple, so I prefer it that way. In that calendar, I write everything that I want to do and I time block. The amount of time they're going to spend working on my PhD, 
on a daily basis, uh, when I want to do my yoga, when how much time it takes me to go to work, how much time it takes me to come back from work. I put everything because if you put absolutely everything that you already have to do, like time, uh, like your work, uh, how long it takes you to go to a certain place, you will have a realistic view of what is currently happening right now in your life and the the more real and the more clear your calendar is you will be able to it will be easier to make decisions and to know where exactly and when you can do a certain task or a certain goal so i have put my morning routine, uh, when I want to do my exercise, uh, even the time that it takes me to get ready before going to work, um, because it's just the better, the, the clearer that this calendar view is, the better for you at the time of planning. This is not the only planning that I, I used to do. Apart from my calendar, my time blocking, I had a, a digital planning system. And in this, I had um, a digital planner in my iPad, and in there I planned absolutely everything that I had to do. Personal life, business, and my PhD. Now, this may work for you. You may be the person that having everything, actually I have a friend that this is what works for her, having everything on one planner, with absolutely everything that he needs to do, it's perfect for her. For me, I have just found out that it's actually not not helping me. It's actually getting me overwhelmed, demotivated. It's a disaster. Like at the end, I when I see the amount of things that I have to do, instead of getting motivated and trying to plan it, I just I just don't want to do anything. And I have uh, for the past few weeks a part of sick because uh, I have been quite sick I have felt very very down and like unmotivated and not really wanting to do anything and it's very weird because I love my PhD and I love the business that I'm trying to to build so these are just bad signs so I said look I just need a different planning system so I got two new planners and they're not digital I'm going back to paper and this was actually friends' recommendations and my therapist's recommendation. He just said that I spent an enormous amount of time in front of screens. Maybe that is just contributing to me feeling demotivated. It doesn't mean that it's, ha it's going to happen the same way to you, but he said that maybe it was one of the reasons. So why not change? Go back to paper planning and see what happens. And he said that sometimes maybe just the smallest change in the, the, the way that we plan can give us back that motivation and that, you know, energy and, and wanting to, to, to plan again. So I got two different planners, one for my life, my personal life and the business that I'm trying to grow. So that one, I got it from the Inspired Stories and I have to say that I love it. I'm trying to take it. So it's this one right here. So it's a, a ring, a ring binder uh, planner, and I love it because then at the end I can take this out, keep it as, you know, um, for my memories or whenever I want to go and uh, look back in time and how I felt. So this is one for, it has a, a section with goals, and then it has a section for every single month, and then day by day, because I really like going day by day, but they have like other types, they have like weekly, uh, vertical, um, and things like that. And I love it because it has a section to reflect on the day, to reflect on the week, and I do that a lot. I do that a lot. And then I like that it has some pockets. So here I've got my today's um, intention. <laughs> so I really like this for this purpose. And then for my PhD, I took another planner. So you see, I have separated it completely. I have got one for my personal life and business and another one for my PhD and I will not put anything other than the PhD work in that planner. And that planner for instance is a vert uh, week vertical planner so I don't need day by day, I just need the weekly, this what we're going to do in each place. So this is what is currently working for me. I'm very motivated right now. I actually want to work now. It, it ha It's working for now, let's see, because I just started this change, but I just wanted to share these two examples of planning and just like as a message of how important it is to find the right planning for you. So don't try to copy what other people are doing. Just try to get inspired, search, but really try to find the one that is working for you because you are the one that's going to be working on your life and on your goals and your habits. So it's it's really important that you're not miserable <laughs> in, in that process. 
The next thing that I am going to advise is to digital declutter. I truly believe that our surrounding affects really how we feel and our behavior. If we have a, a messy surrounding, there's a very high chance that you will feel messy and demotivated. And for me, it's the same when it comes to computers, uh, tablets, phones. If you have all of them organized in a messy way, when you go to them, I feel that it's going to have a huge impact on how you feel and how you behave. So I really put a lot of effort into digital decluttering. You know, if suddenly my desktop is packed with documents, files, I try to organize them and put it in the correct place. Now, since last year, I have done a very good job with this. So I've got like the perfect, not, the, not, not perfect, but a wallpaper that really helps me stay motivated. So my wallpaper right now, it's a vision board with all of the goals and the things that I want to accomplish and a calendar. So whenever I come and sit uh, in front of the, um, the computer, it's like a reminder <laughs> of why I'm here and what I want to work on. And I feel this is a very good thing to have, you know, your vision board as your wallpaper because in life you're going to get demotivated and you're going to feel lost so many times and it's so normal, it's part of the process, but having this vision board I feel like is going to be kind of a reminder for those days of why you're here and what it is that you want to do, kind of a reconnection to yourself. So I really think this really helps. And another thing that I have been really good at is having all the files and documents away from my desktop and organized. However, not so good at having the files and documents in my drive, in my personal drive, in my PhD drive, and in the Google Drive. Right now, that is a mess, and it's actually a task that I need to work on, so it's part of my life reset, getting those files and documents in those drives correctly, because whenever, um, organized correctly, sorry, because whenever I want to go to it to find a document, the other day, my supervisor said, can you show me the data from whatever thing? And I said, sure, yeah, here it is. And it took me so much in front of him, so much time to look for it. And I was like, I promise I have it. I just don't know where it is. And that was like a clear sign that I need to work on the organization in my drive. Because if you put the effort in organizing your files and your documents, the next time that you need to find something, it will be easier and also you won't feel stressed and frustrated of the fact that you cannot find something that it's actually there. Okay, another thing that I would advise, and I think this is a really, really important one, mainly for our mental health, and this is social detox. Take some time to be away of the social media, and not only social media, but away from your phone, just away from devices and screens. And something that I want to uh, suggest here and that I normally take a lot of time into doing is to really evaluate who you're following. I think in our daily lives it's really easy to have negative, like really close and happening. Um, I always try to to have a very not negative surrounding, however that is always hard to control because you never know the other people what, what they're going to do. But I really put a very big amount of effort into making sure that the accounts that I am following are not bringing me any extra negativity into my life. Um, I love happy accounts, I love uh, accounts that promote self-care, that bring awareness to mental health, to normalize kindness, accounts that, you know, make you want to keep on going and encourage you to keep on going. I love those types of accounts and also I like to follow accounts that give me information of what is happening in the world, like the real information, they don't try to lie. Uh, of course this is always something difficult to do. But um, I would suggest you unfollowing any any account that is not bringing you any of this or it, that whenever you see it, it's just negativity, you know? Um, I, I know I do. Um, and to be honest, I don't even follow all of my friends. I mean, I, I love my friends, but sometimes I don't resonate with what they post or how they post it. Or, and it's just, it's not bringing me any value, so I'm not following them on their accounts. And it's okay, it's fine, that doesn't mean that they're not my friends, and they totally understand this, and this should be normalized. My mental health for me is extremely important, I don't like to be stressed, I don't like to be anxious, and it's stress and anxiety can cause so many diseases, and I just 
want to do my best into doing this and I'm in my social media I'm consuming content for me so I'm not going to consume something that brings me negativity or puts me down or, or our accounts that are insults or bring hate to the world so I would suggest you doing the same thing here the next thing is home reset so I briefly said this before but I think it's very important to do this practice as part of the life reset because your home or your room is where you spend a lot of time in or mainly when you spend your resting time in. So if you have a messy room, a room that does not bring you any, you know, calmness or, you know, um, it's not a place that you want to go to, you need to change that. Or at least that's my opinion. I think having a healthy home with plants, a humidifier, mainly now with the, with, the, with the winter that we will use a lot of heaters, I think it's really important to invest the time into creating a healthy environment in in your home, decluttering as I mentioned before, um, maybe think of something that is not bringing you any joy in your house or you want you would like to change. So for instance recently I saw that my workspace wasn't actually my workspace, it was just a spot there in the house. It was not helping me to work, it was not motivating me to work, it was just there and it was the time to make a change and upgrade, think about of a good desk that would make me work, a uh, monitor that would, would make me uh, work. So it's really important to really take the time to evaluate on your home and the current setting of your home and seeing how you can improve and seeing if it actually is making you achieve the things that you want. Okay, and finally, one uh, suggestion that I gave last year that was new and a lot of people actually quite liked it was to choose your books for the year. So the purpose of choosing these books is to help you with current situations that you have right now and that you don't really know what to do. So for instance, last year I was really struggling with my PhD, how I was feeling with my PhD, the amount of work that I had to do, how to balance you know, the experiments with reading articles, and how to balance the amount of work that I had to do uh, in my PhD with my personal life because I was mixing it, um, I would arrive home and still continue working, I didn't have that, you know, that thing of it's I finished the day, it's time to rest and not continue working. And also I struggle with a lot of fear towards my PhD and con you know, uh, giving a presentation and talking about the, the topic of my research and all of that. So the books that I chose last year were fo focused on this too. Now, this year I am better at those themes, I'm actually way better at those themes. Uh, those books actually help me. There's one that I, I still haven't finished reading and I really want to finish reading it, but um, now there are new things um, that I want to work on. So for me, it's um, I'm currently uh, having a, a, taking a yoga course. Um, so there's this book which is in Spanish and it's uh, yoga for my well-being. I'm pretty sure that maybe you can find it in English maybe. Um, so it's from Xuan Lan and I follow her on Instagram and I love it. This book my, um, my boyfriend gave it to me for my birthday and I haven't had the chance yet to read it. So this is my, my book for this year. As a cancer researcher, I am quite obsessed with everything that has to do with cancer, mainly having an anti-cancer lifestyle and what habits and what things we can do in order to have an anti-cancer lifestyle, which means, in my mind, for me, it's like a healthy life. So there's this book that I bought and that I started, but then I got busy with work and I didn't finish it. So this is, it's called The Cancer Code. Um, from Dr. Jason Fung and I really want to read it. So these are my two books. Normally I, I have seen a lot of people that choose a lot more books and this is just totally going to depend on you and your ability of reading books. Me, I am not good at reading several books at the same time. If I have too many books at the same time I will probably stop and give up on all of them and actually I am not planning to read these two books at the same time. Maybe yes, I don't know. I haven't decided that yet. Probably not. I will start with one and then continue with the other one. But these are the two books that I would like to read this year. Uh, one for yoga, uh, because I'm really trying to learn the benefits of yoga and how... Uh, I mean, I already know that yoga has a very big impact in our life and to make us live a healthy life, but I don't know the depths of it and I really like to learn it. And also I discovered that there's this... Um, 
a thing called yoga therapy. So it's actually yoga used for several treatments and for several diseases. So after my yoga course, I would really like to look into that more deeply. Uh, so yeah, and the cancer call because I yeah I want to learn more about cancer. So yeah, this is my advice here for you to take two books or one. Just think of a current situation that you're living right now that is really tough for you and it's really difficult and you need some you know knowledge and some some help into into knowing how you can take action towards that. A book could help if it's the right book, of course. Um, but yeah, that's my advice for this. Okay guys, so that is the video for today. I think it was quite a lot, to be honest. Yeah, I would love to know what you think, if there's anything that you do for your life reset, if you find found any of these things useful. Um, yeah, maybe something that I didn't mention that would be useful to, to hear. Just feel free to share anything in the comments. And yeah, also if you want to share your experiences, uh, that would be so lovely. Last year, a lot of you uh, shared your experiences and it was just wonderful to hear how you were doing and also a lot of suggestions. Um, I would love to hear everything about how it is going and uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to end the video here, wishing you a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!